hi hello namaskar friends so today's topic is electrolysis this is a quick revision icsc class 10 so without wasting time let's start electrolysis contains two words electro means electricity lysis meaning breaking so if you are bringing about a chemical change in any compound by passing electricity or you are breaking a compound by passing electricity then that is called as electrolysis first we will learn what are the important words we should know important definitions you can say words to know first one to pass electricity what we need electrolyte the metallic conductor Will not be sufficient here those will not act as electrolytes electrolytes are those which can form ions and those ions can conduct electricity so what is an electrolyte electrolyte is a substance which can conduct electricity in molten state or in aqueous solution state molten means when you melt it aqueous solution means when you dissolve it in water so that you call as electrolyte there are two types one is a strong electrolyte Another one is weak electrolyte. Strong electrolyte are those which dissociate completely. Dissociate completely when you melt them or when you dissolve in them. Dissolve them in water. Weak electrolytes are those which dissociate partially, not completely. Partially means what? I will give you simple example. If you take hundred molecules of any substance, all the hundred molecules will form. 100 cations and 100 anions but in weak electrolyte what happens if you take 100 molecules maybe some 10 cations okay 10 anions will form and 90 molecules will remain as such okay examples of strong electrolytes are strong acids like hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid okay strong uh, bases like sodium hydroxide uh, potassium hydroxide strong uh, salts sodium chloride potassium chloride etc weak electrolytes are acetic acid remember and acetic acid and ammonia ammonia solution these are all weak electrolytes okay there is one more there are certain substances which do not conduct electricity in molten state or in aqueous state so such substances we call them as non electrolytes okay we have strong electrolyte we have weak electrolyte we have a non electrolyte many times this question is asked what are the type of particles present type of particles present in strong electrolyte weak electrolyte and non electrolyte strong electrolyte completely dissociate so ions only weak electrolyte partially dissociates so ions plus molecules both will be there non electrolytes they do not dissociate at all so they will be only molecules very important question okay next next what what else we need we need to pass electricity we need electrodes so electrodes are metal plates metal wires or graphite rods etc so we have two electrodes one will be anode another one will be cathode anode is the one which is connected to positive terminal of the battery cathode is the one which is connected to negative terminal of the battery so therefore this will be positively charged this will be negatively charged clear how do I remember anode add add means plus obviously another one should be negative okay so here anode because it is positive it attracts what type of ions it attracts negative ions negative ions are anions so the similarly cathode is negatively charged what type of ion it will attract positive ions positive ions are cations okay so these are anode and cathode so what type of reaction happens here all the electrolysis reactions are redox reactions redox reactions redox reactions means both 
oxidation as well as reduction happen simultaneously if you don't remember what is oxidation reduction I'll just tell you addition of oxygen is oxidation removal of oxygen is reduction removal of hydrogen is oxidation addition of hydrogen is reduction next what is important in electrolysis is with respect to electrons so oxidation is loss oil loss of electrons reduction is gain rig of electrons remember this mnemonic oil rig oxidation is loss of electron reduction is gain of electrons so now what happens here oxidation reduction done okay what happens at anode what happens at cathode many people will have confusion so for that i have one more mnemonic cnr pow you might know the cnr rao the scientist okay similarly cnr pow what is c cathode negative reduction means cathode is negatively charged and reduction takes place pow positive anode oxidation anode is positively charged and oxidation takes place at the anode so if you remember this mnemonic you will never have any confusion okay next electrolytes and all done <clears throat> next what is one diagram you have to remember this is a schematic diagram for all electrolysis process okay there will be one electrolytic cell it's also called as voltmeter so there will be two electrodes positive and negative depending upon to what end of the battery they are connected so positive here negative here so this will be anode this will be cathode and these are always submerged in the electrolyte always submerged in the electrolyte okay when you switch on the current the electricity will pass the molecules will break down into ions and they will undergo oxidation reduction then the chemical change happens okay so this is a schematic diagram for all the electrolysis process you have to refer to this next next what happens one more important difference you have to know between ionization between ionization and dissociation both are not same so when you take any ionic compound ionic compound separation separation of ions ions which are already in ionic state already in ionic state all the ionic compounds in acl they are already in ionic state but these are ions which are not free to move but the moment you melt them or you put them in water they will become free they will separate as a cation and anion so this process is called as dissociation then what is ionization ionization is for polar covalent compounds ionize ionize in water which are not in ionic state initially so when you take ion, uh, polar covalent compounds polar covalent compound like hf you take okay or ammonia you take hcl you take whatever so because of electronegativity difference it will have a slight negative charge this is a slight positive charge the moment you but these are not ions like this this is just a star separation not ions okay so when you put them into water they will dissociate sorry ionize into h plus and f minus so if there is a polar covalent compound which is undergoing forming the ions then it is ionization if ionic compound is forming the ions then it is separation of ions that you call as dissociation okay done next how this process happens i will just tell you once so that you can apply it for everything so there will be a anode and cathode there will be electrolyte which contains what ions 
positive ions and negative ions when you pass electricity anode is positive cathode is negative so cations will move towards the whatever cations are there okay they will move towards the cathode anions whatever are there they will move towards the anode and respectively oxidation reduction happens and they will get discharge okay but sometimes what happens there will be competition between there will be competition between cations and anions when there are more than one cation and anion okay say there is copper plus 2 and h plus there is sulfate ion and nitrate ion nitrate is really don't get hydroxide so in this case how to choose which one is uh, which one will this get discharge so that we call as preferential or selective discharge preferential discharge or selective discharge it you have to refer this only when there is a competition more than one cation or more than one anion for this what we know sorry what we need is electrochemical series electrochemical series for metals and for these anions okay i think you already know electrochemical series okay there is a mnemonic also if you type in the google you will come to know please stop calling me a zebra in instead means iron nickel instead try tin tin is sn learning pb instead try try learning how copper and mercury save gold and platinum okay this is for metals and for non metals sorry for anions how do i remember suno suno no call bro in home suno no call bro in home okay okay now how do you know which one will get this get discharged first so as you move down this series we know reactivity decreases same thing happens here but preferential discharge is whichever is present below that will get discharged faster so among these two copper and proton hydrogen ion copper is below so copper will get discharged first then hydrogen similarly for anion sulfate and hydroxide is there hydroxide is below sulfate is here so hydroxide will get discharged before sulfate similarly if there are bromide and iodide iodide will get discharged if there is a uh, say iron and silver silver will get discharged so whichever is lower in the reactivity series lower in series discharge first so first preference will be given to that okay so this you have to remember next so sometimes what they will ask you in the exam give three points or three reasons or three ways for different preferential discharge or selective discharge one i already told you what is that what is the relative position of cations and anions in electrochemical series okay so this only you have to write the ions that you already know k plus na plus okay plus 2 plus 3 or whatever second point concentration concentration of electrolyte so sometimes if the electrolyte is more concentrated i if it is dilute we will get different kind of discharge preferential selection will change but that we will not learning in detail one more nature of electro nature of electro now it is very important we have two types not the anode and cathode the nature one inert electrode another one is active electrode 
inert electrode is the one which do not take part in the electrolysis process it's simply there active electrode is the one which do take part in the uh, electrolysis process so examples for inert there are only two remember platinum and graphite okay active electrodes are the metals copper nickel iron silver etc these are all active they do take part in the electrolysis process okay so these are all things we need the basics next we will take the first electrolysis process first one electrolysis of electrolysis of lead bromide but solid they do not conduct electricity either they should be in molten state or aqueous solution so it will be in molten state okay fine so electrolysis of lead bromide what is the reaction happening here okay you are separating lead bromide into lead and bromine by passing electricity lead bromide is liquid state because molten lead will be solid metal bromine is liquid reddish brown liquid okay what are the ions present so obviously there is a lead cation and bromide anion there is only single cation single anion so there is no question of preferential discharge now very important a reaction at cathode cathode what i told you cnr huh? this also remember oil rig cnr rao not rao pow oil rig to remember oxidation reduction so this to remember what happens at cathode and anode okay cathode negative reduction happens here reduction means cathode means cation will come so pb how many electrons two electrons it will take and become pb what is the observation most of the time question will be asked observation or reaction what is happening at cathode and anode so write the observation here silvery gray metal deposited at cathode this is your observation always always remember metal ion if it is there it will go and deposit on cathode always what is the reaction at anode pow oxidation oxidation means loss of electron bromine is the br minus loses one electron becomes br but br is not stable we always need br2 so two bromine atoms bromide will lose two electrons and become bromine always whatever electrons involved in uh, anode reaction should be equal to electrons involved in cathode reaction so what is the observation here reddish brown liquid uh here because we are heating it vapors observed so what is the temperature here to melt 380 degrees celsius okay we use a silica crucible here okay silica crucible so why is silica crucible as electrolytic cell sometimes this question is also asked because it is it has high melting point so it should not melt before the lead bromide melts right it's a non conductor it should not conduct electricity and it is non reactive it should not react with the ions present okay so these are the reasons you can write observation i already told you electrolysis of acidified or sometimes they call it acidulated water remember we always acidify water with dilute sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid is acting as a catalyst so therefore this is also known as catalysis catalytic reaction why because pure water when you take distilled water it's a non conductor of electricity so to make it conduct we add h2so4 so what it does h2o it will break it into ions h plus and oh minus okay 
or uh, you know what it will give h plus so h3o plus and oh minus will form but it will remain as such so therefore it is acting as a catalyst now what are the reactions happening one water is breaking down into h plus oh minus and also we have sulfuric acid sulfuric acid will form h plus so4 minus 2 here we don't have a normal uh, voltmeter or electrolytic cell we have a different kind of voltmeter here this is called as hoffman voltmeter so it's kind of h shaped so here you have electrolyte sorry electrode cathode and anode connected to battery so i will say this is so means this is anode this is cathode okay there will be some knobs here and all fine so here what you are adding acidified water so it will be submerged into water acidified water okay so cathode anode means anion will move we'll see what we collect here so what do you call this as hoffman hoffman voltmeter hoffman voltmeter or electrolytic cell so reaction is this ions already we know h plus okay this is 2h plus and uh, anions are oh minus and sulfate now single cation so no competition two anions there is a competition if you refer the electrolytic sorry electrochemical series oh will discharge before this so reaction at cathode cathode what cnr reduction a reduction cation will move h plus will accept electron and form h okay we'll keep it as such anode pow anion will move oh minus will lose one electron will form oh this is very important many people do mistake in writing this so one oh will combine with another oh and form h2o and one o one o will combine with another o and form O2. So this is what oxygen gas is releasing at the anode. But overall, when you write this, 4 OH minus lose 4 electrons and form 2 H2O and O2. Water will remain in the electrolytic cell. Oxygen will be released in the form of gas. Okay, so how many electrons involved? 4. So here also we need 4. So 4 H plus will take 4 electrons and form 2 h2 2 h2 but if you see here this is 2 this is 1 so therefore in electrolysis of acidified water the ratio between volume i am talking about volume not the mass hydrogen and oxygen if you take it is 2 is to 1 because of this reason okay so it means what 1 liter of oxygen is released here 2 liters of hydrogen will release at the cathode so always anode what is releasing oxygen so it here it's double should be your hydrogen so h2o2 okay even if you remember this much that's much that is fine okay so there is nothing else in this let's take the next one electrolysis of very important aqueous copper sulfate using ha huh. here i will cover both in one you will know you will come to know the comparison electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate we have two things in one case we use using platinum electrodes platinum is inert electrode in another case using active active means here we use copper only copper metal copper electrodes okay so this is active you will see the difference now okay again here also we use dilute sulfuric acid to increase the to enhance the conductivity now what are the ions present hmm? copper will copper sulfate will form copper plus two and sulfate h plus and sulfate okay but water is also there aqueous means h plus oh minus so it's same here and here no change 
come to reaction at cathode CNR reduction cation will move so copper and H plus copper will come copper plus will accept two electrons and form copper so what is the observation for this pink or okay here I will write pink or reddish brown metal deposited deposited at cathode okay same thing happens even in this case so I am writing the same thing anode come to anode power oxidation anion will move so out of these two OH minus okay so again same 4 OH minus 4 electrons will give you 2 H2O and O2 so oxygen gas will release at the anode this is in case of inert electron but this will not happen in case of active so here what you will write right colorless odorless gas is released which rekindles the wooden splinter burning a uh, glowing wooden splinter copper when you use active this will change what happens here when you take active electrodes that will compete with the anions because it is a metal it has it readily loses electrons than the anions okay so there is a competition between copper sulfate hydroxide whenever there is active electrode don't worry about electrochemical series directly that metal itself lose electrons because metal readily lose electrons so therefore the reaction at the anode changes you will get copper loses two electrons and form copper plus two okay very important copper plus two ions are formed then what do you will write the observation one more observation we can write here for both at the cathode what happens mass of cathode increases why it increases because the metal is coming and depositing okay so here what you can write not here for active mass of anode decreases mass of anode decreases because copper is melting sorry dissolving or converted into copper plus 2 ion okay there is one more observation color of electrolyte most of the time this is also asked so when you take inert electro platinum electrode initial copper sulfate is blue so the blue color of electrolyte fades away fades away and becomes colorless slowly it will fade away and finally it will become colorless here what happens it blue color of electrolyte remains same remains same now the question why this is happening okay most of the time that question is also asked very simple here at the cathode copper is going copper ion is converted into copper so whatever copper ions are there in the electrolyte they are consumed the blue color of the electrolyte is because of copper plus two ions so if all the copper plus two ions are converted into copper obviously there will be no copper ions and the color will change it will become colorless but here what is happening at the cathode copper ions are consumed but the anode at the same time the copper plus two ions are formed back so one copper plus two ion is gone to the cathode at the meantime another copper plus two ion is given by the anode so therefore copper ion concentration remains same in the electrolyte and therefore blue color will not change it remains same okay that will be the reason okay so this is electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate solution now we have to go for the application part application of electrolysis is one in uh, application electroplating okay electroplating say you have a steel spoon okay steel whatever spoon steel article you want it look like golden one so what we do we do electroplating we just coat this 
steel spoon with gold okay but actually it is not gold it's just coated with gold so for that purpose we use electroplating for decoration purpose and to prevent the rusting so those are the two reasons so in this we have for your electroplating of silver and electroplating of nickel what is the electrolyte we use in silver case very important n a a g c n 2 this is called sodium argento cyanide sodium argento cyanide what are the ions na plus a g plus c n minus obviously it is a solution okay solution means h plus oh minus huh. in all the electroplating process the anode we will take the pure block of metal so if you want to electroplate silver on any substance any article you will use pure block of silver if you want to electrode nickel you will take pure block of nickel what you will use as cathode the article to be electroplated the one i told you the spoon so that which i want to electroplate so that will be your cathode because you know always the cations will move towards the cathode and the metal deposit on the cathode so we want the same thing to happen here right we want to deposit the silver or nickel on the article so that should be your cathode okay so the reaction cathode cation cnr again cation will move cation there is a h plus ag plus na plus but ag plus will win so ag plus gains electron and forms silver silver metal deposited on the article that will be your observation anode oxidation anion will move but here anode itself is what pure block of metal so silver so silver will become silver ion so silver from the anode is going and depositing on the article which is connected to the cathode using as a cathode okay this is the reaction same case here what is the electrolyte we are using here aqueous nickel sulfate solution what are the ions present nickel plus 2 sulfate h plus what is the reaction at the cathode the metal will deposit so nickel plus 2 will accept two electrons and form neutral nickel atom at the anode what happens pure block of nickel is used as the anode so that itself will lose two electrons and form nickel plus two so whatever anode nickel is there that is going and depositing on the cathode that is article to be electroplated always the electrolyte should be the should have always a common metal ion okay so here nickel silver silver so this is electroplating okay there is one more application so that is uh, electro refining electro refining using electrolysis process we are refining the metals okay so here same method anode and cathode okay same thing what we know the metal will go and deposit on the cathode so cathode should be pure thin sheet so here particularly we have of impure copper so there is impure copper we want to purify it okay so pure thin sheet of copper metal should be your cathode this will be impure blocks of copper whatever impure block copper is there that you will use as anode so what happens here we can use plenty number of cathodes and anodes i will just show you thin see here so this should be your cathode cathode means negative this should be your 
anode connected so this is what impure copper this thin sheet will be pure copper what is the electrolyte we are using electrolyte we are using aqueous copper sulfate solution so it should contain the copper ions only okay now you will observe something here some impurities we call it as anode mud deposited near the anode okay now electrolyte what i told you aqueous copper sulfate solution cathode and anode already told you what are the ions present same copper plus 2 sulfate h plus oh minus aqueous solution means always h plus oh minus will be there reaction at the cathode cation copper plus 2 will come and deposit on the thin sheet of pure copper okay then at the anode what happens copper will dissociate sorry copper will form ion copper plus 2 ion so anode also contains impurities so whatever impurities like some impurities gold silver so they will not deposit on here because of low concentration so it will deposit as the impurity here at the bottom we call it as anode mud so that will again taken and purified later okay so this is how we do electro refining of impure copper so this is a quick revision of electrolysis process i hope you liked it so please like share and subscribe take care we'll meet in the next class bye bye